The Chinese Communist Party's public opinion war involves a lot more participants than you may have imagined. In addition to the 50 cent army, 20 million so-called volunteers have also joined the fight. The average age is just 19. NTD's Tiffany Meyer has more. The 50 Cent Army refers to internet commentators hired by Chinese authorities. Their job is to manipulate public opinions online. Their name comes from their alleged pay of 50 cents per post. Georgetown University researcher Ryan Fiduciak published his study about China's internet trolls at a Washington-based think tank. Fedasiuk says according to research data, most of the so-called online volunteers are college students. Their task is to, as they call it, purify the cyberspace. The report says these volunteers need to like, forward and comment on Chinese social media to support the CCP's narratives and policies. They also need to attack, censor or ban anyone criticizing the regime. Their official name is online propagandists. As early as 2014, a notice from the Central Office of the Communist Youth League demanded that colleges vigorously build a team of online propagandists. A list attached to the notice shows the number of online propagandists at different Chinese universities. The top school on the list has 1,200 of them. Fedasiuk also points out many of these college students are not necessarily volunteers. Some of them may want to work in government agencies or state-run companies after graduation. Experiences as an online propagandist can make their resumes look better. Fedasiuk reminds the international community about the CCP's recent boycott of international brands. He says this is just the first step of the CCP's public opinion war. Two men died after a Tesla vehicle crashed into a tree last weekend in Texas. Authorities say they believe it was operating autonomously, but CEO Elon Musk says company checks showed the car's driver assistance system was not engaged. Houston police say a deadly car crash involving a Tesla vehicle was believed to have been operating without a driver at the time of the incident on Saturday. The crash comes amid growing scrutiny over Tesla's semi-automated driving system following several recent accidents. According to local media reports, the 2019 Tesla Model S was moving at a high rate of speed when it failed to round a curve, speeding off the roadway, crashing into a tree and bursting into flames. Authorities say there was no one in the driver's seat. After the fire was extinguished, authorities found one occupant in the front passenger seat and one in the back. Tesla and the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration did not immediately respond to a request for comment. The U.S. Auto Safety Agency said in March it's opened over two dozen investigations into crashes of Tesla vehicles, at least three of them recent. The latest accident could throw a wrench in Tesla's plans as it prepares to launch its updated full self-driving software to more customers. In January, Tesla CEO Elon Musk said that he expects huge profits from the software, saying he was, quote, highly confident the car will be able to drive itself this year. Britain is considering a digital currency of its own. The Bank of England and the Treasury say they're working it together. One possible name, Brickcoin, of course. Entities Patrick Hayden takes a look. The UK is exploring the possibility of creating a digital currency. The Bank of England and the UK Treasury will create a task force to assess the benefits of a central bank digital currency. Treasury Chief Rishi Sunak touted the name Britcoin in a tweet. The Bank of England says the new currency, if it comes to be, will be a new form of digital money for use by households and businesses. Several countries around the world are considering digital currencies. Only the Bahamas has actually launched one. China is currently trialing theirs in several cities. And over the weekend, a Chinese central bank governor said they're trying to get their digital currency ready for the 2022 Beijing Winter Olympics so that visitors as well as domestic spenders can use it. Sweden has indicated it could have its own digital currency by 2026. And the European Central Bank has indicated an electronic euro might be created within four years. The Fed is also investigating a Fed coin. The UK's news is expected to boost Britain's fintech sector. And Sunak says 
If Britain can capture the potential of the technology, the UK will cement its position as the world's pre-eminent financial centre. Patrick Hayden, NTD News, London. An architect in Italy is betting the future of home building using both the newest technology and the oldest materials. Mario Cuccinella has completed a prototype for the first 3D printed home made from clay. The home is built from soil found at the site mixed with water, fibers from rice husks and a binder. The 645 square foot design was printed layer by layer using an intricate lattice work pattern. It includes a living area, a bedroom and a bathroom. The prototype is currently undergoing structural and thermal performance testing. It's an essential step before the project can be scaled. The architect believes this process can be replicated in different parts of the world using whatever local materials are available. And in other news, German researchers have released remarkable videos revealing what life is like inside a honeybee hive. The study comes as bees and butterflies are facing extinction. And today's Andrew Thomas has the story. Spring has arrived and honeybees are hard at work gathering nectar. The European honeybee is a social insect that lives in colonies. They have been used by beekeepers for centuries to help pollinate crops and for their sweet honey. German scientists have now captured a unique glimpse into the bee's hidden world with cameras inside a section of honeycomb. The footage revealed a queen laying her egg, mouth-to-mouth -mouth feeding of larvae by worker bees, pollen storage, and even cannibalism. I think this is a very important step for, um, for the well, 20, 21st gen century um, because we can share videos so easily via the internet and this is such a great um, possibility for beekeepers and for scholars or the public in general to learn about bees. According to the UN, almost 35% of all invertebrate pollinators, particularly bees and butterflies, are facing extinction. At the same time, about 90% of the world's wild flowering plant species, more than 75% of the world's food crops, and 35% of global agricultural land depend on pollination. Seaferp describes honeybees as a symbol of a healthy ecosystem. The honeybee is more or less a symbol for ecological awareness. And I would say this is uh, one of the most important uh, things in, in honeybee research, to, to look at it as a model organism. The UN says between $235 billion and nearly $580 billion worth of annual global food production relies directly on pollinators. The red phone box is an icon of the British landscape, but with a declining usage for payphone services, BT is putting its boxes up for adoption. Since the 1920s, the red phone boxes have served communities in the UK. However, the rise of the mobile phone show a sharp decline in usage. Many phone kiosks now have fewer than 10 users in a year. Instead of removing them, BT is offering the boxes up for adoption. Communities can adopt them if they have a worthy social project, and it is for one pound only. So for us it was about allowing people to keep them, but then put them to some positive social purpose. Since the Adopt a Kiosk scheme was launched, more than 5,000 communities across the UK have given them a new lease of life. The Maritime Heritage Centre in Scarborough on the Yorkshire coast transformed their phone kiosk into a miniature museum. During the lockdown, the centre itself was forced to close its doors but its smaller sister site could remain open. I think it's Britain's smallest museum, absolutely, yes. I believe there is a, a museum in a shed somewhere in Britain, but I don't think there's any other museums in a phone box. In the village of Wimpole, just outside Cambridge, a villager turned a phone box into a mini lending library. The library works on honesty, and anybody borrowing a book can either return it or donate another book. The service has been particularly popular during the lockdown because local libraries and bookshops were closed. Well, during Covid, obviously, because books weren't so readily available, we hope that people have enjoyed and made use of our little library. One of the most popular adoptions is for housing defibrillator units, which could save somebody's life. These tiny units deliver high-voltage electric shocks to somebody in cardiac arrest. The red phone box is a great place for uh, a defib unit um, because it's dry, 
uh, it's secured on all sides, uh, roof and everything. More than 4,000 more red boxes are up for adoption and are looking for a new purpose. That's the news for today and thanks for tuning in. I'm Stuart Lees.